Hey there, this is Tyler from WTFX. Today we're focusing on a lesser known blur called the channel blur. Let's dive in. Aw, the channel blur. You're such a simple effect and yet you can accomplish so much. But before we can talk about the channel blur, we need to understand what the color channels are. Red, green, and blue, often referred to as RGB. These are the colors that literally make up everything on your screens. This apple, red, green, blue. This car, red, green, blue. Your mom, ha! Well, actually, if you're looking at a picture or video of her on a screen, then, then yes, yeah, she is red, green, blue. As I said, red, green, and blue light make up all the colors you see on your screen. When all three colors are shining at full brightness and are combined, you can see that there's not only red, green, and blue, but also yellow, cyan, magenta, as well as white where all three colors meet. It's when you begin to pull the brightness of these colors back that you get the darker colors until you eventually get black. It's easy to understand how you can get the whole spectrum from just these three colors. But the most important thing to understand is that all colors are made up of, say it with me, red, green, and blue. Going back to the channel blur, we can see that it lets us blur the reds, the greens, the blues, and the alpha. As I turn up the amount in the red channel, only the red becomes blurred. Same thing with the green and same thing with the blue. Jumping down to the blur dimensions for a moment, you can see the type of controls we have over how the overall image is blurred. The default, horizontal and vertical, is the standard blur look. Select this option and go down to horizontal for the blur to only be applied from left to right. Click the drop down once more and select vertical for the blur to be spread up and down. Now for the alpha. As some may not be familiar with what this is, let's take a moment to explain. And before you start associating this with what society relates the word alpha to, like wolves or fraternities or Rick Moranis, I mean, although look at him, there, there does seem to be a certain ruggedness. Hmm. But it's here that the alpha simply refers to the area that's visible. We can think of the alpha as a mask. And if you aren't quite sure what masks are, please be sure to go check out our video on the compound blur. When I show the alpha channel, you can see the image turned black and white. Where the image is black, that means it's not visible, and where it's white means that it is visible. The alpha blurriness will blur the outline of the alpha's edge. And now let's look at it in color. To better demonstrate the repeat edge pixel functions, we're going to bring back the Your Mom guy and place an orange box the same size underneath that image. When you blur an image, say with the Gaussian blur, the edges will also become blurred, which can be kind of a problem as it can reveal the layer underneath because the edges get so soft, just as we can now see that orange box. When you select repeat edge pixels, it will bring back the crisp edges while maintaining the blur. Repeat edge pixels in the channel blur is similar, but does this only with the colors that are being blurred. When we blur the green, you can see how the edges turn more of a magenta. That's the color that's left when green is absent. If we check the repeat edge pixels box, the green is expanded to the edges of that layer. Whether you like the channel blur's ability to blur each color channel individually, or its ability to also blur the edges of the layer, I think there's one thing we all can agree on. At least this isn't your mom. Thanks for watching. 